what is the creepiest thing you've ever witnessed posted one day ago. I'm a paramedic and had just put a car accident victim in a body bag with a decapitation from driving under a truck's rear trailer. Coroner gave us the okay to load him up. He was wearing a heavy jacket and sweater, so we just stuck him in the bag and began to load him. After we got underway to the morgue, I heard a noise and the guy was thrashing around in the body bag violently. I was out of my mind. This guy had 90% of his head missing. We pulled over and my partner who didn't see it goes back and opens the bag while I was about to piss myself. All of a sudden, a very small chihuahua jumped out and ran up to my partner. He must have been in the guy's jacket pocket or then been knocked out or just quiet until we got underway. It took me the rest of the shift to relax after that. 32 years in EMS and I've never had anything like that happen to me. Me and my friend were walking home from a party and we passed a generally abandoned campground. We heard a dog barking, which was unusual since it was one in the morning. The bark sounded weird though. It kept persisting until we both realized what it actually was. It was a guy imitating a dog's bark. We heard insanely aggressive crunches coming from the woods, so we booked it back to my friend's house. Maybe not the creepiest thing ever, but it really freaked us out. Running around my neighborhood at 3 a.m. with my friends in middle school. We were fucking around outside when we heard a cop car come flying up with its lights on. We dove into some woods to hide and the cop car slowed down, put on its searchlight and scanned the woods. We stood stone still, the four of us, until the cop passed. Then, all of a sudden, one of my friends sprint between us off deeper into the woods. What the fuck? We start whispering to each other trying to figure out which one of us had just run off. We walk out of the woods and realize that we were all there. Someone else had been hiding in the woods with us. This is only creepy in hindsight. My now ex-husband and I were living in a building with nine efficiency apartments. We were the middle apartment on the third floor. One day, the neighbor that lived directly underneath us knocked on our door. He came in and started apologizing for being short with us several days before. Honestly, he had no need to apologize. He was not rude or anything. We got home at the same time he did and he politely told us he didn't have time to talk. We told him it was fine and then chatted for a few more minutes. He told us how we were really nice neighbors and we joked about the time our cat got out and wandered into his apartment, probably thinking it was our apartment. Before he left, he said, hey, listen, I'm going to be working on a project, so if you hear banging and loud noises, don't get alarmed. When I'm finished with that, I'm going on vacation, so you won't see me for a while. We told him that was fine and didn't think much of it. About a week later, he was found dead in his apartment. The project he was working on was a scaffold to hang himself. Before he hung himself, he paid his rent in advance, left his door unlocked, and turned his heat up to 90 degrees. He had an ex-wife that he was feuding with, so we think he wanted her to be the one and the only one who would come looking for him and find him as a disgusting, decomposed mess. Unfortunately, he didn't account for the smell. We started smelling something putrid early one morning, so I called the rental office and had them investigate. I told him it was probably a sewer leak. The poor maintenance man walked in on the mess. So basically, the dude came up to say goodbye to us and to make sure we weren't on bad terms with him before he died. I wish we would have had a warning sign or something so that maybe we could have gotten him some help, but we weren't close with him and there was really no way for us to have known. About 9 p.m. in the winter, so pitch black outside, I lived in an end terrace house at the end of a road, so I'm the last house before the undeveloped section woman who lives alone too. I generally had the light on in the room I was in. My PC was placed that I could see the front door in my peripheral vision. I hate dark windows because I don't like the thought of someone being able to see in at me while I can't see out. So customs build little curtains for door windows. Anyway, in my peripheral, just below my closed door curtain, I see the door handle twitch as if someone had just quickly tried it. My doors are always locked at any moment that I am not directly traveling through them. I watched the door a while, but write it off as my mind playing tricks on me. Just as I got to turn back to my PC, I straight up watched my door handle be tried again, slower and more deliberate this time. They tested the entire travel of the handle to see if it was unlocked. I went flying upstairs and turned all the lights on to make it clear that I was home and I had noticed something. I threw open the window to look out the door, but my eyes were still adjusting to the pitch black outside. Someone ran from my front door into the undeveloped bit and kept going. I was either about to be the victim of a robbery, a rape, or a murder, or all three. But I've no doubt that having my door locked that night saved my life and that without that curtain, the person outside would have been able to better stalk me or plan his attack. 
It's not that creepy in hindsight, but it weirded me out big time back then. I was probably 13 and I was sitting in my room playing video games by myself. I was a slob at that age, so my room usually looked like a dump. I was sitting in my mini lounge chair by the TV and had paused my game because I felt something staring at me. I looked around and didn't see anything. I started to play again. Felt eyes on me again, so I turned and looked around. Nothing. This happens on and off for about an hour. Finally, I pause my game to read my notes and drink my soda. As I'm putting the can down, I notice that to my right, like five feet away, there is definitely something peering out at me. I had a bunch of papers from school all over my floor, so I couldn't really see what was going on over there. I very slowly turned my eyes to look over there without moving my head so that I could catch whatever it was in the act. I saw a small but decent sized dark head duck down quickly when I caught a peek of it. I had a bunk bed and immediately launched myself up to the top of it. Fuck that. I couldn't see what the fuck that thing was, so I'm just looking and listening. After a minute, I hear rustling and see paper shuffling as this thing is running across the room. I'm straining to see what it is, since now I know I'm not imagining this. It gets to the bookcase, and there's a pause, and then I see the biggest ass spider of my life diving behind my books. I think what freaked me out most was how self-aware it was, like that fucker ducked when our eyes met. I've dealt with spiders before, and usually you don't get a reaction from them unless you start walking up to them or throw something. I never saw that particular spider again. I set off like three bug bombs in my room that night and probably almost killed my family because I didn't warn them and did it at 12 a.m. when everyone was sleeping, lol. I like to think I killed him, but I know he spent however long big ass spiders live stalking me in the shadows. I was bathing my son in our old house. Mrs. was out and about there was nobody else in the house and if anyone was to come in the house I would have heard the front door go. I was sat at the end of bath by the door and I heard a knock on the door which was right by my head. It made me jump because it was so close and loud. My son immediately perked up thinking it was his mama and it didn't occur to me at the time that she wouldn't have knocked on the door because I communicated beforehand that I was bathing him anyway. But anyway, I said, all right babe, to which there was no reply. So I opened the door immediately and there was no one there. So I shut the door and within a second of shutting it, knock, 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 harder this time. So I opened the door right on the end of the third knock. Not a soul in the house. By the time, my son was confused and really worried. Naturally, I played it down and said it was mom playing a trick while my heart was nearly bursting out of my chest. Scary shit. Long story. TLDR at bottom. House sitting for a couple with two dogs. I didn't know the couple well, but my brother's girlfriend did, so that was enough for me. They never mentioned they had a camera in their living room, but I noticed it within five minutes after I began house sitting. No big deal. I always act as if there are cameras around regardless. I noticed often that the camera would rotate and point at me if I wasn't in point of view. Creepy, but I wasn't really alarmed at that point. The point where I got alarmed was when the owners would text me and ask me how the dogs were doing but conveniently, they only asked when I was not there. I never left the dogs unattended for more than a few hours, plus I had other stuff to do, so I wasn't going to sit around their house all day every day. It always made me feel awkward when they asked because I knew that they had to be checking the cameras frequently to notice this. My breaking point was probably my fifth or sixth night there. I was supposed to be sitting for 12 days, and I played a game with the camera. I would get up and move around the main area of the house, sit, and wait to see how long it took for the camera to rotate. I even went into the guest bedroom, which just so happened to be in the camera's view as well. On average, it would rotate and point at me within 10 minutes. My anxiety got the best of me at this point because I knew I was being watched way more than necessary. So I went into the bathroom to call my brother's girlfriend. I explained to her everything that was going on. She was very upset about it and said she wanted to come over and see how bad it was. While on the phone with her, I get a text from the owner asking, how are the dogs? and I casually reply and say, great, they're outside currently. I then peeked out of the bathroom and watched the camera rotate and turn to look outside. Brother's girlfriend came over, but I let her in through the sunroom, which was out of view of the camera. She watched me go through the whole ordeal while the camera and was beyond freaked out. We went outside and discussed how to approach this. Basically, we decided to politely call out the owners and tell them the constant checking of the cameras was inappropriate and extremely unnecessary. They got extremely defensive, said that camera doesn't rotate unless it's a motion activated or if the Wi-Fi is reconfiguring. I was already two steps ahead of them and told them that I had researched the exact camera 
and found out you can rotate it from an app on your phone and that it is not motion activated. It doesn't even give a notification if there is motion. Their response was this them telling me to GTFO of their house, they weren't going to be accused of being creepers and that I could keep the money. I took the money for the days I worked and left the rest. I wanted them to feel like shit, plus it didn't feel right taking it all. Not sure what their deal was, if they were just overprotective of their pets or creepy or both, but it was just beyond weird. In case anyone cares, I was 22 at the time and they were a couple in their mid-30s. TL, DR, house sat for a couple that watched my every move through their indoor camera. Fall, 1988. My parents built a brand new house in a brand new subdivision on the edge of suburbia, bordered farmland. One evening, I was sitting in my room doing homework. My sister was in her room next to mine. My folks were downstairs, all quiet, about 5 p.m. or so, still bright out, no windows open. My 13-year-old sister, two years older than me, comes flying into my room all freaked out and said something strange just happened in her room. I followed her back, but she stayed in the hall initially. She pointed out her dresser, a solid wooden thing about four feet high, completely level. There were some odds and ends on top of the dresser, including a can of Aquanet aerosol hairspray. It was the 80s. She said it moved across her dresser by itself. I picked it up and placed it about 12 inches to the left and stepped back. It began to tremble a bit in place and slid in a quick, smooth motion to where it was when I picked it up. We both freaked out. Then I picked it up and repeated the action a few more times, maybe four more. It moved the same way each time, and then it stopped and would not repeat. We ran downstairs and told our parents. They would not listen and could have not cared less. Okay, this happened just last week. My mom and I had a really long year, her working at a school and me being in school, not the same school, so we decided to go to a nice spa, something we never do. Once we're finished, we go into the locker rooms and this old lady is just straight up changing in the middle of it instead of using one of the changing rooms. So, seeing a random half-naked woman is weird on its own, but it gets weirder because she somehow knew my name. This woman is just talking to me while changing like we've known each other for years, saying things like, oh, my boyfriend's daughter's name is my name. It's such a nice name and shit like that. I'm just nodding along, smiling, a technique I've learned over the years of talking to my whack job of a grandmother. My mom comes out of the changing room, giving me a look like, who the fuck is this woman? Which I silently reply, I don't know. The lady finally leaves, and we see her again at the checkout, blowing her money on the spa's skincare products. So I'm in no way religious or spiritual or believe in the supernatural, so I chalk this up to sleep deprivation, but sometimes I think about it and it makes me shiver. I used to go explore caves and abandoned mines with my brother and his friends when I was in middle or high school, and there was one day that we visited a mine. It was hard to get into. We had driven for a long time to get there. I had hardly slept, and it was dark, almost immediately after going past this gate that was set up in front of it. Everyone else had walked ahead of me, and I was getting really nervous, using a shitty flashlight to see where I was stepping and avoid bits of snow near the entrance and a bit of water and rocks. Honestly, just worried at first about spraining an ankle or something. Anyways, I get maybe 100 feet into this mine, and everyone else is fairly far ahead of me, heading downwards, and the darkness of the cave was getting to me. It had never bothered me before, but it was so smothering. It felt like it was a substance I was breathing in. I was panicking a bit, and I heard someone whisper something into my ear. I said fuck this, and yelled at everyone else that I was not going any further, and went back out to the car. They were gone for another 30 minutes or so before they came back, which I was glad about since I was just calming myself down. One time, when I was about 11, I was asleep in my bed. Next thing I knew, I was awake, sitting on a table in my room in my underwear with my arms resting on my knees, staring down. Not sure how I woke up sitting down, and I'm really not sure how I woke up in my underwear, since I always sleep fully clothed. I just sat there for like 10 minutes, just staring down the whole time. I was somewhat conscious and knew I was awake, but for some reason I couldn't move. It was like one of those moments where you get stuck staring at something, while you just think into a void. But I wasn't thinking, I was just staring. After those 10 minutes, I snapped out of it and immediately started bawling tears in complete shock of not knowing what just happened. I've told this story before, people say it was sleep paralysis, but I don't know, since usually sleep paralysis happens in your bed in the position you were sleeping. Maybe there was some sleepwalking mixed with sleep paralysis, but I don't know. 
While on a hike in the southern Appalachians in Alabama, I heard a very distressed squealing which sounded very much like it was a pig. The squealing was coming in my direction, though the trees. I couldn't see anything, but I panicked and so hid behind a tree. I began hearing the grunts of a frustrated man along with the squeals. I could not make out what the man was saying apart from, Hold still, goddammit! Eventually a pig came running through the woods wearing a women's lingerie. Shortly thereafter, a large man in his underwear came chasing after the pig, holding more lingerie items in his hands. Luckily, the man did not see me. I was very terrified. It felt like I got sucked into some kind of wrong turn or hills have eyes situation. We used to live in a townhouse complex, so our backyards were all close together, literally right up against each other, very tiny and cramped. You could hear and mostly see each other pretty clearly, but for the trees in the way. Basically, from any back-facing upstairs window, you might know if your neighbors were outside or if their dog was out or whatever. One day, I hear screaming and crying. Look outside. See a woman in my neighbor's backyard laying on the back porch on her stomach. I see someone grab her by the leg and try to drag her back inside. She's fighting and clawing, but they drag her in. I don't know what the fuck was happening, nor did the police, who told me everything seemed fine when they went over to check the house. I wonder if they even went to the right one. They were notorious for fucking up addresses and being awful with directions in our neighborhood. So, yeah, not sure if I witnessed a rape or a murder in progress or what. I still wonder about that woman sometimes. When I was a kid, my grandmother lived with us. She suddenly passed one day, and on that day, the ceiling light in her room stopped working. We didn't get around to replacing the bulb, but a few days later, we came home after the funeral, and the light had started working again. I don't believe in ghosts or any paranormal stuff, but it definitely creeped me out as a kid. When my grandma passed away in 2010, my parents and I flew down and stayed at her house. I slept in what used to be my mom's bedroom years back. The door would slowly swing back and forth, but the creepier one was the massive bang in the living room. We were all in the master bedroom, going through my grandparents' stuff. We couldn't figure out what the huge bang was and only heard it the one time. After my grandpa's passing a few years prior, we visited and stayed with my grandma for a bit. There wasn't anything weird going on after his passing, only hers. At the beginning of 2020, my mom passed away. I could feel her in the house. She passed in the hospital. We shared a home and I had to clean out the upstairs where she lived. My close friend had also visited the day my mom passed and could feel her too. Every day I could feel her energy and like she was watching me go through all her stuff and even apologizing to me. She was a hoarder. My four-year-old at the time could see things flying around the house too. This home wasn't old and nothing ever felt paranormal before. This went on for a little while, then one day I felt like she had went to the other side. The landlord sold that home and I moved into a condo. I could feel her presence again right after moving in here, as though she was visiting my daughter and I, then she went back. Every once in a while I wake up in the middle of the night feeling watched. It's not so much creepy to me as it is interesting and even comforting, but of course, to others it would be kind of weird or creepy. I'm glad I'm not reading these at night again, though, lol. <laughs>